Hey, Leslie, happy new year. Josh Reed here. Hey, Josh, happy new year to you. Um, Harrison Phillips workload has continued to go up and he's continued to take advantage of it. Um, when you went back and watched the film, what, what did you see from him uh, from Sunday's game against the Falcons? Josh, he played really, really well for us. Uh, ended up playing so well that he's our game ball recipient on defense. Uh, you know, he did a great job of harassing the quarterback. That fumble recovery was big. It led to points for us. Uh, he had a, a number of tackles as well. Uh, created a TFL for us, a tackle for loss. Uh, so he's playing really well, shedding blocks, getting off of blocks, and then getting that pocket push up the middle that we needed when we get good edge pressure, like the one we, the sack that we had with Greg. We've been lacking that at times, that inside pocket push, but he's giving that to us. So he's playing good against the run. He's helping us in the pass rush, uh, just really doing, doing a lot of good things for us. The, the tandem up the middle there with, with he and Ed Oliver, you know, we hear so often about chemistry on the offensive line, but the interior of the defensive line, how much do they have to kind of be hand in hand with each other? Yeah, it's a good question because you really want your D-line to be in sync. There are a lot of times, Josh, where we're running games where they need to be on the same page. And it, it's really the same way in the run game as well. I mean, they really got to do a great job of all being where they need to be gap responsibility-wise. So that continuity and that really working off of each other, it's important on the defensive line, that chemistry and their, their understanding of where one guy will be on this play versus another play or this call versus a, a different call. Thanks a lot, Leslie. Ha have a good week. Thanks. Hey, Leslie, it's Jay with the Buffalo News. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Levi Wallace and the season that he's had really to date. Um, and, and then maybe in particular, since you lost Tredavious, what you've seen uh, from Levi and how he's respond responded to that challenge. Yeah, you know, Jay, he, uh, he's really been consistent throughout the season. He's been very steady for us. Uh, hasn't had a lot of ups and downs. Uh, he's been a guy we've been able to count on week in and week out and really not have to worry about. Uh, you know, in the past, uh, have, knowing that we had Tre Davis and uh, people going to uh, stay away from him for the most part, uh, you really were concerned, you know, how is Levi going to hold up against this guy or that guy? But that hasn't been the case in 2021. He's been really steady for us. He's gotten the job done. And then in Tre Davis's absence, I think he's really helped Dane uh, to uh, go out there with confidence, you know, giving him some tips in practice, talking to him in, in our individual drills. I think he's helped Dane's game. Uh, and we needed that. We needed him to step up his leadership, not just in his play, but also verbally as well with a young corner opposite him. And uh, he's been really good for us in that way. Yeah. And then uh, the other guy I wanted to ask you about was Mario Addison. He had uh, another sack yesterday. I think it was fifth uh, leads you guys. And uh, I know, you know, his veteran leadership is a big part of, you know, what he brings to the table too. But uh, you know, where, where, what do you think about where Mario is particularly, you know, I mean, he's at, I think 33, 34 years old. Um, you you've tried to maybe manage his snap counts to keep him fresh. How do you think he's playing for you? Uh, recently uh and then you know season kind of overall if you could yeah i think the last month or so and it's due to eric washington our d-line coach doing a really good job of managing his reps early in the season and it's mm -hmm. benefiting us now in late december into early january uh with the play that we're getting from him we didn't wear him out early in september and october and we tried to get him to this point both he and jerry hughes where they could really help us down the stretch and Mario's been consistent for us throughout the season, his veteran leadership in practice, his veteran leadership in our meeting rooms, and of course in games as well. And we've got that consistent play from him. But I think a lot of it has to do with, we understand where he is at this stage of his career. And we just tried to make sure we're getting the most out of him at this time of the year. And it's, it's paying off for us. Thanks, Leslie. Have a good week. Thank you. Good afternoon, Coach Frazier, George Radney, Challenger Community News. How are you doing this afternoon? Doing well, George. How are you? Pretty good. I'm just good. wondering now with the coaching carousel starting to take place and they moved the dates up, I'm wondering has your agent or your representative been, uh, have been contacted at the present time regarding your uh, a possible in interview coming up for you? No, have not uh, heard from any teams or anything like that, uh, which is fine with me. You know, we got a lot of work to get done. Uh, lot on our plate uh, right now so uh, it's all good all good
All right. Well, I'm sure that that phone will be ringing pretty soon because I, I don't know what's going on. You definitely should be a candidate for sure. And uh, my second question is, Levi Wallace, do you think his playing at Alabama, being a walk on and learning uh, and, and, and at those big colleges, those guys, see a lot of them seem to always say that they the practice sometimes is harder than the game. The way they practice, the Clemsons, the uh, Alabama. Matter of fact, Arthur Smith, the coach of uh, the Atlanta Falcons, mentioned that uh, yesterday about A.J. Terrell, that th th these guys come in from these big schools, they really know how to practice. And a lot of times they're practicing is harder than the, those college games that they had to play. Do you think that's is something to that in Levi Wallace's case? Uh, yeah, I think uh, George, a lot of it is is the makeup of the individual. Uh, we coach some guys who come from small schools that come in and really are hungry and really equipped to play at our level. Uh, but mm -hmm. in Levi's case, and I, I look at it from an individual standpoint, you would think that if you went to a Big Ten school or an SEC school, you're playing against the, the cream of the crop and and that's enough to prepare you to play in our league and play at a high level, but that's not always the case. I think it comes back to the individual and that individual's makeup because uh, the competition at our level, as good as uh, those, those top college programs are, it's a step, it's a step above. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's every player you line up against is capable of having success in, in our league. So it's a little bit different in college, you know, where you may play three or four elite guys uh, in, a, in, a, in a year. You're playing elite guys every week, sometimes multiple elite guys. So it, it has a lot to do with the individual uh, and his makeup. All right. Thank you very much, and good luck this coming week. Thank you. Hi, uh, Leslie. Happy New Year. Happy um, New Year. I want to ask about Terrain Edmonds. Um, you know, he, he's obviously locked in next year, you know, with his uh, option, but there's a little bit of uncertainty beyond that. And I know that he's talked about this before, uh, saying it does, doesn't really bother him. But can, in your experience as a coach and, and even going back as a player, can, can that be something that, that gets in a player's head? Um, you know, just uncertainty over his, his long term uh, viability. And um, do you worry about that with him? I, I think with some guys, it could potentially be an issue where it's in the back of their minds because of the potential injury situation. But Tremaine is such a mature guy, such a level-headed guy, and he comes from a background where he has a parent who played professional sports. So I think he looks at it through a different lens than some who may not have come from a, a, a similar background. Uh, so his maturity and his ability to be able to see the bigger picture and not allow uh, this one season to interfere uh, with what his long-term goals are and what our team goals are, I think is a credit to his background and, and, and the fact that he has parents uh, who have played at a, at a high level. Uh, so that's kind of equipped him to have the, the takeaway with the right approach. Uh, but I could see some guys, uh, it could probably have an effect. Now he's, uh, I guess, you know, by today's standards uh, of linebackers, at least, you know, inside linebackers, non-pass rushers, he's a giant. I mean, there's, there's hardly any 250 pounders anymore. Um, yeah. what, what kind of dimension does he add, a unique dimension does he add? That. Well, it make, he, he makes it really hard for quarterbacks as they are trying to make throws over the middle of our defense. Uh, it, it's, it's difficult as those guys are trying to judge his range, uh, and, and particularly when he gets his hands up. You know, he's had a number of batted balls over the course of his, his short career in the NFL, and a lot of it has to do with quarterbacks just not sure of, you know, what he can do when he raises his hands up. He ends up being about six foot seven, you know, when he, when he gets his hands up. So, uh, it causes a problem for quarterbacks, his length, uh, but also for running backs because of the way he can close uh, on running backs when he's, he's tracking them down in the alley. Uh, you, you, you think you have him gazed because he's a long strider, and all of a sudden he's on you. So uh, his length is a plus in a lot of ways. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie, um, we're talking a little bit to Greg um, after the game uh, about the rookie wall and the challenges of your rookie season. And, and then again with Sean today, I'm curious, what have you learned about navigating that with players over the course of your career? And has anything changed as you've learned more about how you do navigate it yourself as a coach and anything that you might do with your staff or with the player itself that, you know, to kind of guard against it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's a really good question. Uh, it's, it's funny you ask that. We, we met with 
myself, uh, Eric Washington, Jock Cazier, our assistant D-line coach, met with Greg, Carlos Basham, and A.J. Epinesa just to talk about this subject just a week ago. Uh, and it's it's a real occurrence, uh, that rookie wall. I've had other players who've experienced it, you know, went through it myself. Uh, you know, this is a long season compared to what those guys have experienced in college. And then you take Greg's situation, which is a, a unique one because he didn't play any football in 2020. And all of a sudden, you're in such a lengthy season. Um, it can get to a point where you, you're looking and saying, man, when is this thing going to end, you know, and it can affect your play. Uh, so uh, we, we wanted to really get out in front and try to uh, let our players know. We had these discussions through October and November, and we wanted to sit down and revisit some things just a week ago uh, to let those guys know we understand where they are. We know how, how challenging it, the, the NFL season can be, uh, but just to make sure from a nutritional standpoint, from a rest standpoint, uh, just taking care of your body, that they're doing the right things to help themselves and also mentally uh, to be able to disengage sometimes. You know, when we are out of the building, uh, just try to relax and you take your mind off of football. But uh, it's, it's a lot longer season than what they've experienced before. And, you know, we just wanted to try to prep them and prepare them for what they're going to go through and, and help them to get through this period because we need them. We need them to play at a high level and not to regress in late December or early January. There, there were a few games early on where the production was really high for him. And obviously, you know, it's, it's hard to expect that week in and week out for a player. And did you notice for his case specifically that that helped? And what did you make after putting the film on of his game uh, on Sunday against Atlanta? It looked more, to your point, looked a little more like what we saw early in the season. And that's what we need this time of the year. I mean, he's capable of winning on tackles. He's capable of winning in the run game as well as the pass game. And uh, we just want to see him consistently play at that level. Uh, and yesterday was, was really good. I mean, that looked like a breakthrough game uh, for Greg. And we hope to see that, you know, going forward. Did he come over after the game and say, hey, thanks for the co talk, coach? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We gave each other a big hug, though, for her hugs of encouragement for sure. Awesome. Thank you so much. Happy New Year, Leslie. Thank you. Hey, Leslie. Um, I know you were asked about Levi and all how he's been playing and all that, but now that you've got a five-game sample size since Tredavious went out, I'm curious how you feel like this whole secondary has kind of responded and what has been your impressions? Has anything surprised you or stood out in that time? Well, we've been really pleased, uh, Elena, with our secondary and the way they come together. Uh, it was you know, obviously a tough loss uh, losing to Davis. You really couldn't project uh, how, what kind of impact that would have on us. But the way Micah, along with Jordan, have kind of held things together and the way Levi has displayed tremendous leadership for us, I think that's helped Dane to really come along. And he has not been a liability at all. Uh, he's made some good plays for us. He did it yesterday, made a nice play in that, on that first third down, I think, of the game. Uh, so it's really good to see how our secondary has stayed together and really helped us to be successful in, on, on defense in large part uh, because of some of their play and the fact that we have really good leadership in, in, the, in the back end. And then on a completely separate note, I had been thinking back, I think it was my first week covering the team, but you had mentioned at the beginning of the season that you, Ed Oliver was someone you thought of as a breakout guy. He could have a big season. No, there's a game left in the regular season, obviously, but I mean, the season he's put together, your prediction coming true I mean how impressed how proud have you been of just what he's done this year you have a good memory I remember you asking that question back back in August uh you know extremely proud of what Ed has done he put a lot of work into his craft in the offseason uh Eric Washington and Jock have done a tremendous job of just helping him take his game to the next level and that's what we've needed uh from Ed we needed that this season uh, we need that breakout season. And, you know, you hope that for players, but you don't always get it. Uh, but he's worked so hard to put himself in a position to succeed and now to see some of that success. And obviously with the beneficiaries as a defense, because uh, he has been so disruptive uh, for offensive linemen trying to block him. And uh, just pleased for him and, and proud for our defense because he's helped us tremendously. How would you describe Ed like in meetings? Like what kind of guy is he kind oh, of like, <laughs> you know, we see him and he's got a personality, but I'm just kind of curious, like what do you see from Ed as a coach? 
Oh, he's a big personality. Believe me. <laughs> he's a guy, fun loving guy, always just a ball of energy. It's like he plays on the field, you know, hundred miles power all, all over the place. Well, uh, there are times Eric Washington has to tell him, can you just uh, be quiet, just sit down in your seat and just pay attention because he's an energetic guy. And, uh, you know, when he's in the room, everybody knows he's there, which is good. I mean, his personality is one of those that's uh, really kind of brings everybody together. You know, he likes to have fun, likes to tease his teammates, and uh, and he can take it a little bit too, but he can definitely give it out. But he's he's really good, just good to be around. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie, Happy New Year. Um, I know you yeah. talked about uh, Harrison Phillips already, but I was curious, Greg Rousseau, after the game yesterday, was saying about how Harrison's also been so big as far as helping younger guys along, bringing some leadership. And I know he's kind of young himself too, Harrison, but on top of his play on the field, where do you see that showing up kind of behind the scenes with this team? Yeah, Kathy, uh, that's a really good question as well. I'm, I'm sure you're aware that we didn't have Eric Washington in the New England game, our D-line coach. After the game, Jock Cesar uh, came to me, our assistant D-line coach, who, who had to kind of run the show. And he said, man, I really appreciate Harry. You know, we call him Harry, Harrison. He said, I really appreciate Harry. He, uh, he did a great job of communicating my message to the, to the players and then taking that to the field as well. And that's the, that's the part from a coaching standpoint that the fans would, wouldn't really know about, but you need players like Harrison who can really take your message to his teammates and make sure that gets communicated correctly. And it, and it comes back and, and it shows up on the football field as well. So that type of leadership is big to have a guy who kind of understands the big picture of what we're trying to get accomplished, but he's also a good player at the same time. And that, that really gives him some credibility with his teammates they trust him because of that. And then the coaches, he's earned the coaches' trust as well. So just that little tidbit, just having a guy that, that the coaches trust, that his teammates trust, who's also a good player, you know, makes us a good defensive line, a good defense. Was that New England game, I don't want to say a turning point, but was that kind of the most you had seen it at once? Or where have you seen that development of leadership? I think it's always been there, Catherine, but, you know, he, he's been injured, so he was kind of, in and out of the lineup early on. And the more he's played, uh, the more credibility he's gained with his teammates because he's been productive. He's been a really good player for us. So now when you are marking out orders sometimes, I'm more apt to listen because I see your play. And your play kind of solidifies, man, I really need to listen to this guy. He knows what he's talking about. And that's what he's been for us. I mean, he's one of those guys who has tremendous knowledge and he's a good football player as well. Uh, and he's a very good leader. And so now you combine that with his willingness to share the fact that, you know, he's, he's not, a, not a rookie. You know, he can help a guy like a Greg Rousseau or a Carlo, Carlos Bastion because of what he's been through. I mean, that's, that's what you need, a veteran guy who's willing to share, and uh, those guys will listen when you, when you make plays. Gotcha. And then to jump back for a second to what you were saying about the rookie wall and meeting with guys, um, I'm curious, it sounds like, there was a lot of tangible advice of, you know, eat right, get your sleep, do these things. But you also mentioned the idea of just saying, we've been through this, I've been through this, we see what you're going through. How much do you think that can reassure a player, a rookie, just to hear this has happened to other guys, this is not just you? Yeah, I think that's that's very important uh, because when you're going through it and you're looking at the tape, because, you know, we're showing them tape of, you know, how you played in September versus how you are, say, in late November or early December. And you're looking, you're wondering, man, why am I not getting off the ball like I was in September? Why am I not, you know, getting, this, getting to the ball as fast as I was in, in, in October? And you just want them to know that, hey, we know what you're going through and you're going to get through it and we're going to support you as you're working through it. But uh, there is some mental fatigue that comes along with this when you're in such a long season compared to where you were in college. And they just need to be reassured that you're going to be all right. You know, just keep taking care of your body, doing the right things, and we'll get through this, this, this period. Uh, and we believe in you, and we're going to support you through it. And I think that helps a player a, a great deal. Appreciate it. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome. That'll do it for today. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome.